A man went crazy after realizing that his partner had invited her ex to his home when he was away for a business trip. Now she also drops a bombshell that he may not be the father of her baby. Damn. When he went out of town, did he voluntarily call you at all while no. he was gone? Five. Maybe not one Five. call. Maybe maybe two or three times, like the whole time he was gone. Okay, so two or three times you did yes. speak to him. Yes. But when you called him, he didn't return your he call. He would not answer my call. One of your exes. Now you didn't decide just to date him. You decided to actually move him right on in. All he wasn't. The way he wasn't. In. He, he didn't live in. here. He what came kind of from woman out of does town. That? that she was pregnant. I get back. We sit down. We have the discussion. I asked her point blank that that baby. Is not my baby. So once you heard that, out. I catch my cut. And I was gone. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma That's not yeah, my. You didn't say that. You didn't say that. Ugh. You didn't say. It. But the at the same girl. time, I don't think it's my baby. Well, I don't. Don't care think what it's you my think. baby. So you don't think it could be his little, baby. So the point is, baby. is that you have doubt. Do you know for certain, or are you just doubtful? Once you say you are not the father to a man, that baby ain't mine no more. I didn't hear from. Him. Okay. So after spending years with the defendant and having five kids for him, he. He cheated on her by getting married to another woman and now questions the paternity of the last baby. Now the parties are in court to know the outcome of the paternity test. Miss Thomas, you claim you spent six years in a relationship with the defendant, Mr. Taylor, and gave him five beautiful children. In return, he cheated on you and is now questioning the paternity of your youngest child, eight-month-old Jakai. You are here to prove paternity and win him back. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Nelson, you say while you were home taking care of your children, Miss Taylor was out at all. Is that true, Mr. Nelson? No, it's not, Your Honor. It was good in the beginning when when we first started having children. And then after that, it's like we started, me and her started like both doing our own little thing. And we was already about to split, but she ended up getting pregnant. But at that time, she was already messing around with other guys. So I didn't know who, what to believe. It was rocky, but I was not sleeping with different men. Mr. Nelson was the only one that I was sleeping with at the time, especially during my conception date. Man, that's but not when true. you first got together, what was your relationship like? Our relationship, it was good. That was my best friend. We did everything together. Mr. Nelson says that he'd always been the one taking care of the children when she was away, cheating. But funny enough, he'd also been cheating on her. Now, Ms. Thomas said that the reason why she'd always cheated on him was to get back at him. So she wanted him to know how it felt to be cheated on. And that's why I never engaged in any of that he said, she said, Sally selling seashells down by the seashore nonsense. She like, I'm going to work today. Cause I went to the She'll come back and be like, you like this outfit right here? I'm like, yeah, where you going? You worked all week. If anything, I've been here with the kids all day long, all four of them. Oh, so you feel like she start getting missing? She did, she came in at five o'clock in the morning. I was like, where you come from? So, so I'm grown, I can do what I want to do. But Miss Thomas, now you were painting a picture about you, like you all were in love, it was against we all were. odds. We were. So what is this, why then do you start having other men popping up on your phone? It wasn't men, it was that one man. Not men. And why? why did you get in a relationship with this one man as retaliation was, for his cheating? Basically. So he seen how I felt all them years he cheated on me. He felt it. And so, so how long had you all been together when you discovered she was cheating? We was like, we, five? yeah. Five years. Yeah. Yes. And four children. Yes. So Jakai is potentially your fifth child together. It's and hard for me to put a nail on that if she was messing with me and the same guy. Now he was excited when she got pregnant, but Miss Thomas revealed that he started having doubts when the other woman came into the picture and he was married to her. Now, he was also cheating on his new wife with Miss Thomas, too. You were pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. What was his response? He was going around telling everybody that I was pregnant. Man. Up until the time he met Miss Campbell, that's when he started denying my son. Mind you, he was cheating on me with her. I didn't know about her until I found out. She was calling him through Facebook, and he was trying to lie then because he, we were still messing around even when he was with her. I got to see, I wish I had an old phone. I could show you. I have text messages also that we still mess around still to this day. Oh, you mighty quiet now, Mr. Nelson. No, me and her, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I, and this, I'm gonna tell my wife right in front of her, I apologize. But she already knew about, my wife already knew about it. She had caught me. It was a video and everything. She caught me. I thought I deleted a video out the phone. She went back in the phone. And he found. only, he's apologizing now because he got caught. But like, why would he cheat on his new wife? Now he said it was a slip up. Now Mr. Nelson believes that he could have both women at his disposal. Now, she revealed that they planned to have a baby together, which was gonna be the fifth kid. She plotted her ovulation and got intimate with him, and she was pretty certain that she wasn't with any other person aside from him. I like that. 
pretty certain. When you found out that your husband was now sleeping with his ex. It's a video I found. The video is dated April 3rd, which would have been, the, I guess, the first day or so that she had um, showed up in Greensboro. All I know is I saw her demeanor when she came around and she was kind of like, hi, Steph. And I'm like, okay, this is a person that's supposedly supposed to be so hurt. Like, Why is she grinning? And then I saw his demeanor and he looked guilty. Mm. So I put two and two together, you know. What would be different this time if I did come back? My mama told me, that's your covenant. You can't break your covenant for somebody else because that's between me, her, and God. I broke my covenant with my baby mama and I got I might been repenting for it and stuff like that. And now me and my wife, we back on good terms now. And I How long ago was this? April 3rd is the date of the video. So, Mr. Nelson. Why would you try to plan a baby? We just have them. That's why they... Your Honor, that, that, he that, wanted that. to plan a baby because with our youngest child, he said, I don't think you can have any more kids because you're birth control. So, you want to plan on having another baby? Let's go. I had the app, and that's what we did. Right. So Evidence was brought up in court showing the text and messages both parties had exchanged. Now, it only got more devastating for his wife. She's disgusted to find out all the trashy things that her husband's been doing behind her back. I have messages. Yeah, I, I, And if he wants to be with me... Did you bring the messages to court with you? Yes, Your Honor. These messages are dated from three weeks ago. So, what is your plan for real? You the plan, he says. This is the kind of conversation a married man's having? No. I can tell your wife did not know you were having those kind of conversations. I, mean, I just wanted to see if, this, see if the baby mind so I can fix everything. You just want to avoid this conversation. I just want him, if he's going to make it, it work... At the, end of the, at the end of the day... Leave it alone. She leave hasn't me alone. done anything personally to me. In all honesty, everything leave between the two of us is strictly emotion, right? There's no sense in standing here when the woman's just trying to acknowledge that both of you are all are in an emotional battle over a man who's taking advantage of both of you and then you sit up and say you don't feel some kind of way. You do feel some kind Way. You really got don't. four kids. No, you really do. Because... because the no, 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 right. no, no. Because I see too much women in your position. And you say, if he just leave me alone, I'll be all right. Miss Thomas only wanted to win him back and have her family back, but that doesn't justify her actions. Now she claims that they've been through so much together up to the point of having kids. And she's angry because the new woman came into the picture and got things so easily and took it all away from her, including her man. But boo friggity who? Neither one of these people is innocent in this case. I wanted my family. He wanted the same thing. I didn't know he was married until, what, a week later, after, before I had my son. He didn't tell me. Uh, right. He denied it when he came to the hospital. This is what I wanted. Six years, five kids, sacrifices, everything we've been through. It's like she got it easy. And at the end of easy. the day, he's standing next to her and she's Mrs. Nelson. And that I could have been Mrs. Nelson angry. twice. But the point is, is that enough to hurt any woman? But I could have been, I could have been Mrs. Nelson too. But you know what I do? No. I turned that down. Cause right. I'm glad I didn't marry him because I would be going through the same thing right now. I'll be married to him getting cheated on too. You still well, say you still in it. She just got a piece of paper. You you need to be honest. You're all in this. So you can't point a finger at Miss Nelson and say, oh, I'm glad I'm not you. I because am. you are her on the other side of the mirror. So now we got it all out in the open. And I'm glad, Miss Thomas, you finally just expressed how you felt. At the end of the day, it all boils down to the kid in question. So let's learn what the results are gonna have in store for these people. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Nelson, you are the father. Now, Mr. Abagast is in court because all kinds of crazy crap going down. Now, he reveals that the promiscuous nature of the plaintiff led him to question if he's the father of his baby. Arbogast, you are in court today claiming the defendant started denying your two-year-old daughter, Kinsley, once he got into a relationship with your former friend. Yes, You Honor. claim the defendant has ignored the needs of your children, so you are suing for the maximum amount of $5,000 for child care expenses. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Vest, you are here to testify the plaintiff promiscuous behavior is the reason you believe you are not Kinsley's father and until proven otherwise, you refuse to financially support her. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Abergas, has the defendant helped at all financially? If you say $100 over two years helping, then, I mean, if that's in his eyes, yeah. $100 over two years? No, he hasn't really helped at all. You haven't been helping at all, Mr. Vess? Uh, no, because how can I take care of somebody's uh, daughter that may or may not not be mine. Okay, well, just because you don't want to take care of our daughter, we still have a three-year-old son that you haven't helped for either. So you have another baby, too. 
Yes. And there's no question as to the paternity of that child. No, Your Honor. But no. do you help financially with that child? I have in the past, but recently, you know, I have not. Now, it don't make sense that another dude is active in the kids' lives. Now, Miss Arbogast's current boyfriend has been the one playing the father figure. Now, he revealed that he hasn't seen Mr. Vest step up to the plate. The little girl don't know nobody aside from him as his family due to the fact that Mr. Vest has been absent in her life. Fritz is your current boyfriend. Yes, Your Honor. And you say he's the person helping you raise yes. Mr. Vess's children. Yes, he's the one who they wake up to every morning. He's the one who takes them out, does things with them, plays football with them. He does the father role. During the period she was with Mr. Vess, she revealed that he had actually told her that in order to break the bond she had with her friend at the time, she's going to have to go and have sex with another dude. I mean, okay. But she did what he said because she wanted him to be happy. But Mr. Vest disagreed with this, saying that she was just making things up. You say Mr. Vest told you? Yes. The only way to break the connection you had with this friend. Told but he says to you need to up. go have sex with him. Yeah, to break the emotional and physical bond of friendship that I had with this man. But when then he what? decided. But but the whole pregnancy. Who gave you this advice, Mr. Vest? And our conception date was a lot August 11th to the 13th, in between them days. So wait, how did this happen then? You, you 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 just go up to this guy and say, my boyfriend says we should have sex. It was late at night. He came and got me. We went to the lake and, well, we went to the gas station, bought condoms, went to the lake, did our deal, and I went back home and got in bed with him. Took Well, took a shower and then got in bed. And he was all good. You say she's making this up? Yeah, I do. We were arguing about something. I don't know exactly what. What time are you going to be here? When I get done having sex with the person <laughs> you told me to go have sex with. He doesn't be making sense. He knew about it. That's the thing. He says he didn't know. He knew about it. You do admit to having sex with this other guy. Yeah. Now, the reason why he's got doubts was because she blurted out to him that he wasn't the father, and his girlfriend's in court to testify that she overheard when she told him that. Now, he also signed a birth certificate because he didn't have doubts back then. Told me that she wasn't. I never once told you it was she on wasn't speaker your daughter. Phone. What did she say, Mr. Vess? We were on speakerphone, and she blurted out that Kinsley may not be mine. Miss Glover, I'd like to know if you know anything about when Mr. Vess found out. Did you ever tell him that she wasn't his? No, I never once told him. If I, if that wasn't his baby and I knew that wasn't his baby, why would I let him sign the birth certificate in the hospital? So you signed the birth certificate, Mr. Vess? Yes, Your Honor, because I thought it was mine. I thought she was mine. I wanted him to also be a father to our son. When our three-year-old son looked at him and said, who are you? Role in his life. I'm not going to just let you take our son when you haven't been around because that is not comfortable with me. He knows me. He knows my boyfriend. But on the other hand, she tells the court that she's been begging him to get a DNA test done, but he refused, claiming that he broke and ain't got the money. Now, he even sent her a text message saying he would only claim that thing if he was his. Now, that ain't no way to refer to a baby that could be yours, man. For a paternity test, I even asked him to go and buy one of those $35 kits off the shelf DNA paternity tests that you do at home and then you send it to a lab. Oh, I don't have the money for that. Okay, but if you're the one begging for it, why didn't you because go out you're and get the it yourself? One who, because you're the one who denies her. Okay, so you should I've pay been, for it. I have been asking. Oh, you have? Yeah, I've been asking for a mm, while for okay. a paternity test. No, you haven't. I have been begging you to be around and you say, here, here, I have this text message right here that says I would claim that thing if I knew she was mine. So you've been asking for the paternity test? No. What I've do you have there, you. Miss Arbogast? I have text messages of him. Let me the see that. Things he said. I also have proof of all the non-finances that he has not helped with that I have spent to put a roof over their head, bills paid, clothes so on their back. So these are text messages between you and Mr. Vess. Mm -hmm. You say it's pathetic that you still don't want to grow up and claim your daughter that you signed the birth certificate for. Mr. Vess responds, I would claim that thing if I knew she was mine. Miss Arbogast says, oh, so now she's just a thing. A thing? That could potentially be your daughter. I, I shouldn't have said it. I was angry. And yeah, I regret saying that. I do. No matter if you claim Kinsley or not, our son still don't. In as much as she doesn't have doubts concerning her paternity, the dates in which she had slept with the other random guy and Mr. Vess clashes, even though she claimed to have used protection. But there's always still that possibility, man. 
and then the other guy is just about two weeks. You say you use and protection, but we know that's not 100% guaranteed. Do you have any doubt at all? I think in my heart, in my stomach, that I think that that is his baby. Think or no? It's two I different know, things. I know. I know that she is his just by looking at that face. Why would I let a man sign a birth certificate to a baby if I'm gonna turn around later and say, that's not your baby? That makes no sense. But why would you go sleep with another man at the to direction of one man? To make him happy. Yeah, you're sleeping with another if man. That, make how how in the world is that gonna make him happy because to potentially make a child with another because man? Because he's the one who told me to go do it and we use protection by DNA, but acting as one, he's absent. And that must hurt you somewhat. It does. It breaks my heart every day. Y you, you don't ever want to think somebody is neglecting your child. No. That, that doesn't feel good at all. When our son called him actually in November of last year and Mr. Fritz was standing right there when it happened. All right, looking high time, we find out if he's actually the biological father of Mr. Abigail's daughter. So stay glued, here we go. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Vess, you are the father. Hi, Pete. While away for a trip, Mr. Matlock's girlfriend had invited her ex to stay with her at day place. Now suddenly she drops a bombshell on him saying that she's pregnant and he may not be the father. Mr. Matlock. Yes, ma'am. You say that a few years back you were suddenly called away on family business. Yes, While Your Honor. absent, you claim the defendant, Ms. Monroe, invited her former lover to move into your family home. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. Upon your return, you say you forgave her and resumed your sexual relationship. Yes, Your Honor. But then she dropped the bombshell that she was pregnant and you might not be the father exactly. of her child. Exactly. Ms. Monroe, yeah. you admit that you have serious doubts about the paternity of your child as well. You argue that when Mr. Matlock left on family business, he stopped answering your phone calls and texts for an entire month. Yes, Your Honor. That's not correct. In your defense, you say you believe he was never coming back again. Yes, Your Honor. Man, that's the best thing to hear when you get back from a trip. Yo, boo, I'm preggers, and it probably ain't yours, dog. Ah, oh, man, poor dude. So she stated that he hadn't been picking up her calls or returning them while he was away on his trip, making her presume that he wasn't coming back. So she had to bring her ex into their home and had a sexual affair with her. The news about her being knocked up got to him through his sister, Miss Monroe, who revealed to him that he's not the father. I mean, lady, he going out on a business trip, not to the corner to buy a pack of cigarettes or a gallon of milk. Like, damn girl, know your code for not coming back. Sheesh. When he went out of town, did he voluntarily call you at all while no. he was gone? Live. Maybe Not one Live. call. Maybe, maybe two or three times, like the whole time he was gone. Okay, so two or three times you did yes. speak to him. Yes. But when you called him, he didn't return your he call. He would not answer my call. You ain't May who pregnant. pretended to be. Whoa, what you mean, May pregnant? I just talked to her I on the phone. I told you that. You didn't tell me that. You told me that after I talked to my sister and you told my sister that you were pregnant. Anyway, after I found out that she was pregnant. I get back. We sit down. We have the discussion. I asked her point blank. Am I the father of the child? Who and the I baby was daddy? Honest. You are no, not I the didn't. father. Well, you you said you are not the father. This is what I said. But beautiful at the same girl. time, I don't think it's my baby. Well, I don't, don't care think what it's you my think. baby. So you don't think it could she be his baby. So the point is, baby. is that you have doubt. Do you know for certain or are you just doubtful? Once you say you are not the father to a man, that baby ain't mine no more. I didn't hear from him. Now he paid child support because she never brought into the idea of conducting a DNA test. Now he was deemed the father by default and has been paying child support for a kid that might not even be his. Oh, you started paying child support. Okay. Because he sent me papers with all his information we, to put him on child support uh, so no, he could no, get no. it. No, no, no. We yes. wanted to get a DNA yes. test Shut done up. because no, she didn't want to get the DNA happened. test done. It's you been, wanted to take three, me it's been three or four years. They sent me, I didn't get no reply back. Next thing I got was I got served with papers saying I missed my court date and I was a father by default. I have evidence to prove that you're Honor, by and the you have so some paperwork. Makes, that, I'm not the Jerome, bad guy. Jerome, can you get the that paperwork that Mr. Madlock says he has? I've established now you're paying child support in the amount of $360 Kill a me. month. Yeah. For a child you still don't know whether it's yours or not. Exactly. First baby. How is this affecting your life? Oh, it ruined my marriage. I was, I How was, so? When my wife found out that they had taken child support out for a baby, I got into a situation I don't want to be with you no more. If you're going to be mad over this, let's just end it right now before it gets too far and we got to actually spend some real money to end this. Now, it's commendable that he's never neglected the payments, even though it had a great effect on him. 
His relationship with his current girlfriend is also being jeopardized because of the mess that he created. Now he's also got a son who he fends for. The income he gets is barely sufficient for two kids and their needs. 90 hours every two weeks I bring home on a good check I might hit 300. I got evidence to prove that also your honor. Here goes one Jerome, of the checks. Jerome can you stuff. hand me that? And this is a, and on well, a bad stop check. Stop making babies. On a bad check. I use protection. I think you got more babies than I got. And? I think, I, and? I think you yeah, got way more than I got. Let's get smarter. Come on, so man, Mr. Matlock you're working triple shifts. I'm killing myself. Killing myself. Trying to make sure you're paying the child trying support. Trying to find a second job right now. Not, not only to pay child support but make sure Christmas Birthday, school time, my son got what he needs. So now, Ms. Monroe, now it's all about your Ms. Monroe, are you receiving If this is my baby, support? I'm gonna take care of this. I'm gonna take care of your daughter so just like I take care of my son. What are you saying? But you still don't know if he's in fact the father of your child. Now his sister's also in court to attest that Ms. Monroe ensured that she didn't have any former relationship with her daughter. Now it's not okay that she doesn't want her to have a connection with a kid that could turn out to be her niece. If the baby was his. When I tried to uh, go see the little girl on a Sunday, she's supposed to brought the little girl to see me, mm -hmm. and she texted me out the blue and was like, uh, well, she's not here. I supposed to went to the little girl's birthday party, but I live in a whole different town every day. I do I work. mother. And so why so is it, Ms. Matlock, out of the goodness of your heart, because said, I'm going to try to establish a relationship just in we, case? I feel like if he's paying child support for the baby, right. you know what I'm saying? Is he? Not saying it is his, but once a man start paying child support. Yeah, I did. I tried try. to see the little girl. I, I did. did. Try. Right. I did try. But Ms. Matlock, thank man you man so up. much. I've established that you've tried to see the child. And now it's time for those messy results. So let's see if Mr. Matlock's the biological father of the little girl. When it comes to five-year-old Kenya Monroe, Mr. Matlock, the wait is over. You are not. I knew it. I knew it. Go find your baby daddy. Put somebody else on child support. Sometimes on paternity court, emotion surges as hidden truths get revealed. Watch how a man brings his wife to court to prove that he's the father of her two children, even though he knows that she's promiscuous. Now he's still hoping that the kids is his. Then what are them results gonna be? You are the father. For that, I'll never forgive you for that. Never. She deserves to know. No, it she don't deserve you. to know. Yes, she does. You lied to her and you lied to me. You should have never ever did that. Should have been straight up front. Now a woman's in court with her ex-boyfriend to prove that he's the biological father of both of her kids. Now the man on the other hand says that there ain't no way that he's the father of her babies and he's got proof on his side. Now he also claims that the DNA results is gonna show the truth and get her out of his life for good. Let's see how that goes for the dude. Ms. Lewis, you say you're here to demand the defendant finally take responsibility because though he denies it, he is indeed the biological father of both your children. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Pippin, you argue there's no way you're the father of her kids and claim you have undeniable proof on your side. Yes, I do, Your Honor. Furthermore, you and your... Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Pippin says that he believes that he's not the father because Ms. Lewis is a liar and a cheat and he's got undeniable proof. You know, that he ain't the baby dad. Now, Ms. Lewis, however, claims that she known him since they was young and he's always been there for him. The father of Ms. Lewis's children. Because she's a liar, she's a cheater, and I have proof. I had his back through everything. When she kicked him out, he came crying to me. When he had nowhere to go at, when you had nowhere to go at, you came home to me. And you would have not both of them, and you asked me to have them. Not once, but twice. So she even housed him when his girlfriend kicked him out. Now we can actually see the emotions and frustrations on her face. Your Honor, that right there, I did ask her to have my child, but... I was with you. Okay, you I can see... see that this is a very passionate situation, and I understand why there are children at stake. But for the sake of this proceeding, let's talk about your doubts as they relate to Sean first. All right, this is getting pretty interesting. Apparently, he asked her to have his baby, but what really caused these doubts to Mr. Pippin's heaven? Let's find out. Sanders, but she doesn't know this. He had this when she had a little red truck. He came to my house. I was home by myself. We had sex the very first time. He moved in with me because she, he had nowhere to go because them two were on the else again. He had something taking my hair out. I was in between his legs. Matter of fact, because me and him were sitting there left in the back because we had just had sex the night before. Take your braids out. Yes, yeah, Sean. Got it. <laughs> So Mr. Pippin says that the reason he's got doubts about the first kids because he wasn't in town when she got pregnant. Okay. Now, Ms. Lewis submitted a conception calendar as evidence saying that he was the person that she was sleeping with during her conception period. 
So you admit you were in a sexual relationship with Ms. Lewis? Yes, ma'am. Not using protection? Right. Yeah. Oh, I was so you're staying... saying it's a timing issue? Yes, ma'am. I was, gonna... I was staying in Tarboro at the time with Ms. Sanders. I have the proof from y'all if you want to see. I would like to see the proof. Jerome, please pass that to me. I was with Mr. Pippin because he kept blowing my foot up and popping up at my house. So I can't be with somebody and he kept popping up, crawling over top of my dad on balcony, knocking on my back door. <laughs> Miss Lewis. I even asked her to marry him? Now, what are we all doing here then? Now, Mr. Pittman really needs to defend himself here, because all odds are against the guy. From everything that Miss Lewis said, he already accepted the kid, so why deny it now? I trust Mr. Pippin. He kept telling me we're going to be together. We're going to build a family because he told me, I wanted you to have my kids. I'm coming home to you with only you. And I want us to build this family. This is when he asked me. He comes to Greenville, where we live at, and he was like, well, what do you want to do? I was like, you asked me to have this child. I won't, I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm against abortion. He said, well, if you your choice, I got your back. I won't be there for you. Miss Lewis is getting emotional here, and I can only feel sorry for her, because it's not easy to be a single mom to two kids. You were the person going back and forth between two women. You are her child's because biological I've seen father. Her with her ex boyfriend, so I asked her about it. Your Honor, the night he claimed he saw his boyfriend was in December of 2011. I wasn't even pregnant yet. What What are you feeling, Miss Lewis? What's he don't even like you because you want on. Your Honor, I have proof that this child looked. You asked me to have him, and now he said you want to take care of him. Mr. Pippin's girlfriend brought evidence to the court saying that her kid with Mr. Pippin's and Miss Lewis' kid looked nothing alike. But I think it's pretty baseless evidence, because siblings don't always got to look alike. On the right side the is alike. my child that I have with Mr. Pippen. On the left side is her child. They look just alike. So Quayshawn is on the left. Just alike. And your they child stable. you've had with Mr. Pippen is on the right. Yeah, both of them are the same. And it is age. your contention that no, there is apart. no resemblance. He got, he got my nose, so what? They talking about something, I don't do anything for this child. I have to went and had the DNA test done. And I have proof right here saying that the child wasn't mine. You do? All right. And Mr. Pippen also said that a DNA test has been conducted and the result shows that he ain't the father of the baby. Now, Ms. Lewis accused him of manipulating the result. Well, that's fine. We're soon going to get to know if that result is real or not. Mr. Pippen, what exactly is this That's the, um, evidence of? That's the DNA test. But so I did not... Your Honor, how, you know, how can you... Oh, so so what's this? I need to provide that clock in some order. What do you know about this situation? I mean, it's just too much going on at that point in time. What do you think he did? We have yet another child. It is time for the result, and I really want to know what that says. Now, is Mr. Pippen really the father of Miss Lewis's kids? Then he's got to do right by him. It's been determined by this court. Mr. Pippen, you are not. I his told father. you then. I told you. Okay, I mean, no me, no me, Jimmy J. Ben doing nothing Same that way. Thing. So he ain't lost a game that he still got a father who's got his back. Why is making a big point of it? All right, man, talk about messy. Like, why is she so mad about the result? I mean, she would have known about the possibility of that kid not being his. All right, went on to the result of the second baby. It has also been determined by this court. Mr. Pippen, you are his father. Thank you. I told you, I told you. Then I step up and do what I got to do. That's what I wanted to know the whole time. I might mess up with the first with the second one. But that's, that's the case. I'll do what I got to do. A man's in court with his wife seeking the result of a paternity test for their two kids. Now, he claims that his wife has repeatedly cheated on him by sleeping with five brothers from the same family. And she even has the name of another man tattooed on her body. Now, the woman, on the other hand, doesn't deny the cheating allegation. And goes on to say that her husband wasn't really her type and she's not in love with a guy. Damn. All right, that's a lot to unpack. So let's get into it. Mr. Rash, you are here today seeking the results of paternity test. Ms. Fuentes has cheated on you repeatedly. You say she once left you for another man, slept with five brothers from the same family, and e are indeed your children's biological father. Yes, you are. Now, Mr. Rash says that he found out his wife was cheating on him when he went through her phone and found incriminating text messages. Ms. Fuentes claims that they were not together when he found those messages. I do, in fact, actually, I have cheated on him. I'm gonna admit that, but he knew from the get-go, like, look, that to, in order to move forward, I told him everything, and I told him, look, don't use my past against me. I was still in love with my that's ex That's a lie, Your Honor. Let I, me tell no, you why no. that's a lie. Mr. Rash, how did you find out she was cheating on you? I found We weren't together. It doesn't we matter. Were, no, no, even it doesn't when we were together. together. Even when we were together. together. That makes no sense, Even Chris. when we were together. For Mr. Rash, he thought they were together, but Ms. Fuentes said that they weren't together. I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding here. 
you know, she, we were she, not she together, done. Your Honor, because he knew my issues that I did sleep around for like my that. younger days. You should That's be spending time younger. with your family I had that you my have, kids, that you married with I us, my the kids. kids. But who me. wants to be with somebody that when it's not so the now? Family? Yeah, we're and together. And so during the time of conception, yeah, you think you're still in a relationship? Yeah. Now, I agree that Mr. Rash obviously has good intentions, but the way he goes about it ain't right. Now he shouldn't have kept the children away from their mom. Please take care, you know, why I go to work, can you at least watch him? He took the kids and wouldn't let me see him for over six months. He would not let me talk or see to my kids. Sit there and, no, and go right. out and have sex that's, and, that's, and drink. That's and, what he wanted to And think. go have fun. Yes, children. Mr. Rash, you have the children. Yes, ma'am. You're raising them. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Fuentes says that she tried to make their relationship work, but she just wasn't in love with him. One question from Ms. Fuentes there, why then did you marry him if you didn't love him? That's just a little confusing. I mean, like, regardless perfect. that uh, I don't want them to think any different of me, and I don't want them to think any different. And I will admit, and Your Honor, he is, he is a good dad. Yes, because, but you knew from the beginning that I was never in love with you, that I was You never issues, was in love with me. And I didn't want okay, to be with all you. these lies, I tried to the deceitfulness. Ms. Fuentes, daddy's too soft. -talk. You married him, though. I did because that's, I loved him at one point in time. All right, this whole thing about having sexual relations with five brothers is a little crazy, but it happened to split up. I told him, look, I'm leaving. We I'm going away for a couple nothing. days because she had called me and asked me and said, we're having a picnic. I said yes. I went over there and my ex-boyfriend, which is one of her sons, he was actually in prison at the time. And we were having a good time and I will admit me and that night. But if you were such in love with, with uh, the other brother, why would you have sex with the other brother? To be honest no with sense. you. Other, she actually admits to having sex too. I want to hear what he has to say. Now one of the brothers that Miss Fuentes was involved with, who's also a possible father, is called into the courtroom. And he says the child in question doesn't look like it. However, the time of conception matches the time they were sleeping together. So that makes him a potential father. Now, what was the nature of your relationship? Pretty much just family friend. And so just a family friend. Right. Do you believe? He could take after my family. But she looks the like time me. of conception matches. You understand that, right? That at the time the child was conceived, you were sleeping with her. That this could be a possibility? I didn't find out until like almost my other daughter came about that that could have been a possibility. We so understand. This is, this is all right. Now the mother of the brothers is also in court to testify and she expresses her hopes that the kid in question is her son's. Oh, how many I, you got? I got 10. Ooh, all oh, boys and three. I got all right. 30 dozen. So she had sex with several yes. of your sons. What I do you, young, what do you really feel young. about that? She'll do anything in the world for me, and I'll do anything in the world for her. I love her children. Seriously, I think the only reason why Chuck would say that she did sleep with his brothers, and he's afraid what they're going to think. Well, the DNA test result is going to reveal the truth, and we're pretty excited to see who the father of the baby is. Sis Fuentes, when it comes to one-year-old Christina, Mr. Rash, you are her father. The younger kid's paternity has been confirmed. Now let's see what the other DNA result test says. When it comes to two-year-old, you are the father. Never. She deserves to know. No, it she don't deserve to know. I'll never forgive you. Never. Two sisters are on court with their father to prove that he's their father. Now they claim that five years ago, their father revealed that her mother cheated and he may not be their father. Now, the man, a retired semi-pro football player, however, claims that their mother cheated on him with his teammate. All right, let's dive into it. Hey, everyone. Yeah. Ms. Williams, five years ago, the defendant, who you believe was your father, revealed a shocking family secret. You and your sister are in court to prove him wrong. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Scales, you are a retired semi-pro football player in Clinton. Elisa's mother cheated on you with one of your teammates, and he is her father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Scales believes that he's not the father of one of the girls because their mother cheated on him during the time she was conceived with his teammate. Now, Alicia, whose paternity is questioned, claims that she did not hear about it until five years ago when she was 27 years old. 1983, we had an away game in Pensacola. We checked into a hotel and I went to bed early because I worked there, but I know it was at least an hour or two. Okay. Right. So, and Alisa and Tanja, have you ever heard any of this? When I spoke with my mom, she had 
talk to him about the fact that he was questioning paternity of me. Mr. Scales says that he didn't bring the issue of paternity up because he didn't want Alicia to grow up questioning who her father is. Well, she's asking those questions now anyway. I spoke with my mom about it later, and she gave me more details of, um, you know, what actually had occurred. And you say this was just five years ago? This was five years. Right. And 27 is not a good age for this to be brought up if he wants me to have balance in my life. I feel in anybody's life at that age, in your late 20s, you're just trying to find yourself, you're trying to figure some things out, and for that to be something thrown in the mix. Alicia presented her birth certificate to the court, saying that Mr. Scales signed her birth certificate. However, Mr. Scales denied signing the birth certificate, saying that he's only listed as the father. Why is it all of a sudden you decided that you needed to share this? This child had nothing to do with her mother leaving that room that night. So I didn't want her to suffer for the effects and the ramifications and repercussions of her mother's action. Why would you sign my birth certificate if you felt like... She's presented to the court her birth certificate. You're listed as father. I could be listed as father, but I never signed it. You did not sign it. You did didn't execute it. it. Now, Alicia said that she's really hurt about the situation, and Mr. Scales should have been her father to the end if he really wanted to be her father. Feel the need to bring it up at the beginning, where you really felt strongly everything was in question. But even though I doubted this one child, I will not make her feel any differently than any of my other children. In his mind, he's thinking, I did what I set out to do. Be clear, I completely and wholeheartedly... person could have been in, in the picture from the beginning. But and this, but now this now is exactly why this, this courtroom is. exists. Ms. Williams pretty positive that the paternity test will show that he's their father. That's correct. Why didn't you list him on Tanja's birth certificate? I really can't give you an answer why I didn't put his name Was there a under. fear that this teammate you were having the affair with was potentially the father, so you no. just didn't list him? No. The, the I, story I, doesn't hold I water. Know, I know, Neither I know yours. the paternity test is gonna show that he is the father for both of them. Now, the DNA test results gonna reveal the truth, and it's about to be read. Agnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Williams v. Scales, when it comes to 33-year-old Tanja Williams, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Scales, you are her father. But as a result, now deep down, I'm pretty sure Mr. Scales got the result he wanted, especially concerning Alicia. Now, hopefully, they'll be able to move on with their lives now that they know the truth. It has been determined by this court. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listing. Mr. Scales, you are her father. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Running away from responsibilities causes more harm than good, especially when a kid's involved. Now, a man denies a kid because he suffers from albinism is heartbreaking. Now, fasten your seatbelt for these mind-blowing cases. These are cases of evil parents on paternity court. I didn't even know that this child was albino, and plus, no one's in my family albino. It has no, no trait of it. Now, Mr. Johnson's in court to prove that he ain't the biological father a little Cadian. Now, he says her accusations is causing trouble for him. Now, she's pretty confident that he's the dad. Mr. Johnson, you are here to prove you are not the biological father of Miss Kirby's 11-month-old son, Caden. You claim her accusations are causing trouble in your relationship, and you are certain the results will clear your name. That correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson says that she's only trying to pin the baby because she needs support. Now, he doesn't acknowledge the baby is his. I don't need she your wanna... help. My baby's well taken care of. He's well, been taken care of for almost a year now. Well, why you threatening me with child support? Because I know you ain't gonna do nothing. All right, let me ask you this. Mr. Johnson, did you grow up with a father in your life? No, Your Honor. I was premature. I was in the hospital for six months. Yes, Your Honor. And you would never do that to another child? Yes, Your Honor. I would never do that because they made bad decisions. Why? If you not taking care of Caden? Uh, because it's not are. mine. It ain't my baby. Baby looks nothing like Caden. Ba my baby looks like me. Now, she was, uh, you know, taking sausage from another bro, but it wasn't during the time that he was involved with it. So, was having two kids a glimmer he doesn't want another one justifying his actions for denying the baby? I don't know. 
And during the time, she already told me, Your Honor, that she was having sex with another guy. A month before you and a month no, after you, no. sir. No, during, during the time we were having sex, she had already told me. You're saying she told you I'm also having a sexual relationship with somebody else. Yes, Your Honor. What did she say? She was like, well, I'm single, but I'm having sex with this dude also. Oh. And plus, he was staying the night at her apartment. Okay. Because he knew from the jump that I was sexual dealing with someone. But maybe if you don't want kids, stop giving chicks your meat. Now, debunking the truth of possible paternity because the baby suffers from albinism is kind of thoughtless. Now, he says none of his family's got albino traits. So, do you feel like that's one of the reasons Mr. Johnson is yes. not believing? Yes. Because of his albinism? Yes. Excuse me, Your Honor. I didn't even know that this child was albino. And plus, no one's in my family albino. Has no, no trait of it. So, you feel like since you've never heard of this, it's not in your family, that... Caden couldn't possibly be your child. That's another area of doubt for you. Yes, you are. All right. Well, Miss Kerb, does anyone in your family have albinism? Do they? No, you aren't. Any of the other two men, you know if I'm not sure. it occurs in their family, you don't know. Now, he hasn't been in the baby's life since he was born. Now, he says he doesn't got a connection with a baby either. He tells the court that he hopes the baby ain't his so that he can move on with his family and his life. I mean, that's a little cold, but you know what? At least it's honest. Mr. Johnson, what are your hopes today? You say you know Caden's not your biological child, but that's different from what you're hoping. Do you hope he is? I'm hoping that he's not, Your Honor, oh. so I go on with my life. Because you just had a baby. Yes, Your Honor. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Honor. You may have another one in about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, what holds for Miss Kirby and her baby? Watch as the paternity results prove the paternity. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. <laughs> Mr. Ball's in court to seek answers concerning the paternity of a baby. Now, he says that she told him that she couldn't get pregnant. But did she lie about it? Now, she's also been sleeping with other dudes, apparently, too. You say that you were told by the defendant, Ms. Cox, that she could not get pregnant, and now she's claiming for an unpaid loan. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, Mr. Ball, yeah. how did you first hear? Morning, noon, night, we would talk every day. And maybe within uh, the last 90 days of me, you know, serving my time, well, when I got home, I actually bumped into this guy at the grocery store. She claims that a sexual relationship ended prior to sleeping with him and believes that he's the father. Now, he got the information on her cheating with other men from her best friend. Now, the twist of the situation was that he also slept with a supposed best friend. That you slept with behind my back. Ooh. Yes, you did. Not at all. Yes, you did. Not at all. And she got pregnant and, and lied times? to me. The whole time she was pregnant that the baby was not his, it was his cousin. But then the baby finally did come back to be his when the baby was like six or seven months old. That's when she finally broke down and told me, and you know what? I was still her friend and I was still there for his child, taking care of his child. Go and get a job. So when I first came home, I wasn't looking for a job. When yeah. I was with her, when we were looking for a job, she was sitting right outside the place in the dude. One place. Now, during the time of the birth, he didn't express any doubts of paternity. Now, Mr. Cox refused signing the birth certificate, but why? Now, he says he wants to make it hard for her with child support. My water broke February 10, 2010, during intercourse with Mr. Ball, and um, he drove me to the hospital. He never expressed to me that he had any doubt at all whatsoever, and when it came down to signing the birth certificate, he wouldn't. And he I never wouldn't. did. He I would wouldn't. not sign the, sign the birth certificate that? because he said he wanted why to make it hard for child support. Why would I tell you I wanted to make it hard for you? And I when I'm there, I offered a I'm DNA there, test in the office. I want to make it hard for you, but yet I'm there. I offered him a DNA test in the hospital, he didn't want it. Oh, I have Never. Oh, yeah, Mr. Ball. Yes, I have. He also refused to have DNA done. But why question the paternity of the girl now? Miss Cox's mom looks at him and sees him as an ingrate. Dear Judge Lake, what I especially don't like is how he, and that would be Mr. Ball, has treated my daughter. I really saw his true colors in December of 2011 when he kicked my daughter and grandbaby out in the snow with all their gifts. I'm not being racist, but he knows he can get away with this because these girls are white and more submissive. As she just stated it, that I couldn't get away with it with a black girl. I've had plenty of black girls. And it was intimate a week ago, but he claims that he doesn't want to be with her. Now, she's also been helping him with child support for his other daughters. Now, he only sees her and her family as a place that he can run to when he needed money. 
And um, just a few, a few weeks ago, about a month and a half ago, I helped him with money for child support for his other daughter. And this is the basis of your countersuit. Mm -hmm. Is there any way you could help me out with a little money so I don't go to jail when I go to court? If you could help, I'd be grateful and appreciated, but you know I'd pay it all back when I get this money. I'll pay it Dang. back. Thanks again for your help. Now that the result is out, is he gonna be the biological father or not? I don't know, man. Let's find out. It has been determined that, Mr. Ball, you are her father. <laughs> is that the news you wanted? Yeah. Now, Ms. Parker and her mams show up in court to sue her husband and also prove paternity of her baby. Now, her husband denies paternity of the kid. He tells them to find the real father and sue him because he's sure that he ain't it. I mean, that's a pretty awful thing to say when paternity hasn't even been proven yet. Miss Bailey, you and your daughter are suing the defendant for 3,600 and he denies paternity of your four month old grandson. You claim he hasn't even given your daughter a single. Yes, Mr. Your Parker, Honor. you say your advice to Miss Bailey and her daughter is to take their lawsuit. I do not believe you are four month old Zechariah's biological father. Ms. Parker says he left her when she was just 16 weeks pregnant and hasn't shown up ever since. Yeah, he dumped all the responsibility on her and her mom and he never even bothered to call and check up. Today, because Mr. Parker has done nothing, not a single thing for my daughter or my grandson. I'm the baby's father. I provide for the baby. I buy the formula and comfort him, not him. I've had the same phone number for... And you claim he left you when you were 16 weeks pregnant? He left me when I was 16 weeks pregnant, 10 days before Christmas. Your Honor. What do you mean? Explain. The last, the last few days there, Your Honor, she told me that I wasn't worth nothing, that I was not allowed to be a part of this family. That's a lie. Now, he says that he's suspicious of her and her activities. He gives unnecessary excuses to prove his claims, like her starting to wear makeup. First it started, she'd start wearing makeup and everything. She was wearing it to church. That was, it ain't so funny. She never wore makeup before. I, I didn't know if she was trying makeup. to get something going with the neighbors or not. Put a lock on your bedroom door? I did. Miss Parker, why? Because all the Christmas presents were in there and I have an eight year old. Go you didn't have anything left in there. Because you threw everything out. Did you lock your husband out too? At that point, I didn't have a clue, ma'am. Now, their marriage has been having ups and downs. Now, he says that the birth certificate didn't have his name as his father, which gives him more doubts than another baby. Now, what were her reasons for it? Now, she gave the baby her maiden name, not his last name. She didn't lie to him. I, I, I didn't, didn't lie. They, the hospital, didn't put him on birth certificate because of the marital problems, because under father's name, it indicates refused, refused, under father's birthplace, refused. That means the mother refused. I gave them his name then because why they wouldn't they, put it on there. And why didn't they put it on there? It's legally required. It was also revealed that she'd been collecting money from his mom whenever she needed something for the child. Demanding to file for child custody when you ain't even been present in the baby's life is kind of condescending. My son, they had one car that he bought. Why was he able to buy that car? He was able to buy that car because he claimed me and my child on his... He has no college degree. I'm He's halfway working through on my college second. degree. Yeah, but I'm halfway through my second. But it don't do no good if you don't work. Let's... Now, what lies in store for both parties? Watch as all the drama plays out. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Parker. Yes, Your Honor. You are his father. I told you. Told you. Told you. Now, some cases take a lot of back and forth to get results, and some other ones don't. Now, watch as paternity court reveals the truth in record time in cases where a man accommodates a friend who in turn slept with his girlfriend. Now, these are the quickest cases on paternity court. Patrick, you say five years ago you made a huge mistake by opening your doors to a stranger who needed a place to stay because that man betrayed you and slept with your girlfriend, Miss Penn. Today, you're here to prove that you didn't father Pence's fraternal twins, four-year-olds Larry and Carrie, and the other man did. Is that correct? A man brings a woman who cheated with his friend in court to prove that he's not the father of her two fraternal twins. Now, he accommodated the friend in question and he stayed for about six days, but then he moved out. 
question, Teresa. I wonder why you just upped and left. Is it because me and you argue a lot? Okay. You know, time goes on. Me and her sat around and had a few drinks, sitting at home enjoying herself. Well, she doesn't show up until the next day, about 10.30 in the morning. Really? And her, her hair's a wreck. You know, she looked like she went through a, a hurricane or something. Miss so Pence, you question. got missing overnight? I did, Your Honor. Why was you gone all night? You know what I mean? What'd you do? Who was you with? And what was her response? So you hadn't slept with him when he was actually living there? No, Your Honor. Wait, did you go looking for him or did you run into it? I kind of went looking for him. Um, Larry had continuously from really? day one accused me of cheating constantly. I Mr. Patrick. Yes, Mr. Okay. Patrick. I had never um, slept with anyone else before that you're, night. I had you're constantly. Flirt. You're so flirtatious. I was const it, th that's how I was no, brought up. Never. No. You constantly accused me of it, and I kept telling you, you're going to keep pushing and keep pushing, and it's going to happen. That night it happened. As she claims, it was the biggest mistake that she ever made in her life and regrets ever doing it. Now, unfortunately, she can't go back and change it. Now, all she wants is some closure so that she doesn't got to deal with a constant argument of him accusing her of cheating. Is the date that me and Mr. Patrick had sex, and then on August 7th is the date that the twins were born. That, that don't mean that. That's a five-day window. It does. The doctor had said that the twins were conceived. A five-day window matter, between Mr. what? From the date that she had slept with the other man. Let's be clear. Miss Pence, which day did you sleep with the other man? October 29th was the date that I had slept. Oh! Yeah, we need to have that circle on the calendar as well. How can you definitively say it was the November said, 2nd? The doctor said that November 2nd was right around the date that I had conceived. What was it? They gave you a date or a window? It was a window of a couple of days, the first couple of days in November. So there's no way possible that it could be the other guys if it was the first couple of days in November. How is that possible? That's a, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yes, it is, but it never happened more than the one time. Now, it appears that he had additional doubts, which are specifically about Larry. Now he believes that he's got ADHD and that doesn't run in his family. So where could that have come from? Now the court invited a board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist to shed more light on the health issue. They can be, but it's a much more complicated picture than that and that's not the entire story. So sometimes we can point to one gene, sometimes it's multiple genes, and sometimes it's the way that the genes interact with the environment, and sometimes the genes have nothing to do with it, and it's just something that happened during the pregnancy or during the delivery or in that child's early childhood um, that can affect how they learn, where the genes had nothing to do with it and it's things that the child was exposed to later. What are the chances that one twin may have a learning disability, but the other does not? Twins, if they're fraternal twins, which is this case here, yes, they are. Um, are no more closely related than any other sibling pair when it's fraternal twin. And so you definitely could have one in one child and not in the other child, even though they have the same two people. Okay. Thank you so much for your testimony. It's been very enlightening. I'll have Jerome escort you out. We don't want to take up too much more of your time, but thank you, doctor, thank for you. coming. So does that change your opinion now that you've heard the testimony of the doc? Possibility, you know what I mean? That it could be passed down. So what you're yeah. saying, what you heard further supports your testimony. Now the result comes back and the kids turn out to be his, which he hopes is the case, then it'd be pretty hard for him to trust her again. But we got to admit that he's got a valid point. So the stakes are pretty high at this point and their relationship is really riding on the result. Like I said, if it does come back, which I hope they do, I will apologize to you. But if not, it's something I'm going to have to ponder on for a while, whether I'm going to continue to stay. We're going to get to the paternity result shortly. But first, I'd like to give you the results of the lie detector test you requested. Well, Jerome? There's nothing. <clears throat> This here's gonna determine our fate. During the last 10 years of your relationship with Mr. Patrick, have you had sexual contact with any other man other than the man whom you admitted to cheating with? Yes, Your Honor. You said no. The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. How is that? The lie detector determined you were being deceptive. That's not, Your Honor, that's not possible. I slept with I, the guy I, I one time. You, I knew it. You one time, Your Honor. My back. No, Mr. Patrick, I did it. It was one time. It never happened other than that time. <laughs> that paper says. I don't care what so, that paper says. Well, I guess it's time we find out the lie detector was just not in her favor or if she was actually not telling the truth. Mr. Patrick, you are the father. I told you that you were the father. I told you. <laughs> a woman and her brother are suing the parents for a paternity test. Now, she claimed just two weeks ago that they dropped a bomb on her during an argument. 
Now, sadly, in the heat of the moment, they inadvertently revealed that it was possible that their dad is not their biological father. Yeah, I'm gonna have to say this. It's, it's, it's been longer than two weeks ago, it's just that this argument sort of brought everything out. And yeah, when I'm you gonna... heard that, immediately you felt, I was in shock. I was just like, uh, how you just gonna fight the argument? How you just gonna leave without saying bye, huh? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do know. understand what you're saying. Yeah, I know. Mr. Hunt, you'd like to add something? This as well. Yes, I did. Me, me and my friends, actually. And I was just sitting there like, whoa. Like. It was, we were having a get together. Everybody was at the house. And you know I'm the stronger one. Even though I'm the little sister, I act like the big sister. But for him to make that statement was just ridiculous. This is the only man that I know for all my life. He's been there for my kindergarten graduation, my sixth grade graduation. How many men do you know sit in a delivery room with their daughter when they're having a baby? Now that's a whole lot of messy questions to answer. Now it appears as if there was some dude named Tommy that the whole neighborhood was talking about that she was supposed to be dealing with and her grandmother had also once said that she looked like this dude. Now she denied looking like Tommy. Now despite all of these things, Ms. Razor never doubted the fact that Mr. Jacobs was her dad. We're here with Ms. Razor, and you agreed to take a DNA test. Yes, I was also, I was at that cookout. Right, you so said that this was your friend. Just that, one second, Ms. Razor. I'm sorry, Mr. Farmer. So were you intimate with Mr. Farmer? Nasty. Is what he's saying. That's yes, Uncle Tommy. That's just nasty. No, There's no, a possibility I no. could be your father. Jerome, would you please go check on Ms. Razor? Certainly. Do you see what you did? Do you see That's what you crazy. did? Just this whole thing tears the whole family him? apart. You sleeping with him? Some 26 years ago. Yes. Around the time Precious was conceived, he could only be Miss Razor's father. Yes. Okay. Ms. So Razor, he, thank he, you so for So that's my son. This is a lot to take in. I mean, having to find out a man you've always believed in to be your uncle might possibly be your dad's kind of crazy. Now, her frustration is pretty valid. Now, before the results are revealed, Mr. Jacobs made it clear that regardless of what the results turn out to be, they his kids and they're going to respect him and their mom. He lied the whole me. time. It's okay. And I wanted to get married in January. And I don't want to go down that ad living a lot. After that argument that they had, I didn't know that it was going to be this big. I just want to know who is my father for real. And he's still going to walk me down this aisle in January. But I haven't opened up to my fiance the way I'm the way I should. Because I don't know who I am inside no more. And I don't know why. I just want to get to the bottom of it. I mean, that's a relief. But let's find out out whether or not Mr. Jacob is her father. Now, hopefully he is, so she can at least be happy on the day she gets married. In the case of Razor Hunt versus Jacob Hammond, as it pertains to 26-year-old Fresh Razor, Mr. Jacobs, you are the father. You are the father. Are not. <laughs> her father. No. That's an amazing dude right there. So without further delay, it's time to find out who fathered Mr. Hunt. Razor Hunt versus Jacobs Hammond. As it pertains to 33-year-old Hector Hunt, Mr. Jacobs, you are not Hector's oh. father. Oh, you is scandalous. A 39-year-old Lithuania Georgia mom who feels her time's running out brings her 20-year-old son to court to prove that her former lover is his father. Now, he admits to being a former ladies' man, but claims there ain't no way he fathered this kid. It was infatuation. I was never in love with him. You weren't? No. I so it was just infatuation. Yeah. So the bottom line, you all did have a sexual relationship, right? Yes, we, we did. We so, Mr. A... Figures, you acknowledge that, right? Yes, ma'am. You did. I definitely know it wasn't just me. Right. So, right, we could go out and pick a spot and get to know each other, you know, per mm -hmm. se. So that's what we did one night. And at the time, you know, when you're younger, sometimes people change their names. And she got a good memory. <laughs> so. This testimony is going real well. As we know they're on the same page. Okay. Well, Go ahead. So, now I admit I didn't stop because we was in the middle of having... But... It's lying. But... It is so lying. Really? Mm -hmm. And to this day, she'll say she doesn't remember that. I wonder how awkward that's got to be. Like, when she found out that she was pregnant, she thought she had a stomach virus, so she went to the doc. Now, they gave her a pregnancy test, and she was shocked that Mr. Figures claimed that she had another guy she was dealing with at the time. Dealing with someone, meaning he had my back. 
don't mean we having sex. Come on, it, man. It don't. It didn't come to. But the person that he's talking about, mm -hmm. he even went to him and told him, "You know, she's carrying my baby." See what I'm saying? Mr. Figures. So, so you admitted that you I, know she carried my baby. No. Yeah. I went to him because and said, when and he said, the later on that day he came to me what and I was said like, to him "Why was, do your, you know that this is what she's saying?" Your he Honor, said, he said, he, "Yeah." Him, but at the same time, they're supposed to be dealing with each other. Then he comes back and says, "Well, he and he's going to take care of a child, or or you know." So how can you say? How, how can you? How, how do I know that? Till this day, it's still in my life in the picture. Okay, we we didn't have good. sex. It's just can and I say that this, he, he, Mr. Yeah. Casanova. I want to give Mr. Wanna, Figures a chance to respond from my perspective of things. Now she's got other kids, and they dads come to pick them up and take them places. But he ain't got nobody, and it's always been him and her. Now, honestly, it's a little sad. Now, she's scared and concerned that he'd be alone and had nowhere to go as she ups and dies. It's been eating me for 20 years that I have this man. I have, I mean, I got you in the palm of my hand. Like, I got your social security number. Why is it taking the state of Georgia 20 years to even get a swipe his mouth? Yeah, and that wasn't my fault. Oh, I mean, I'm not, and I'm never, not you blaming him. You ain't never taken the initiative I, to do anything. I, like I said, if I didn't know how to get in touch with you, how can I? I may have so many you, social media networks here. You can find anybody here. I'm not. So I'm not that's excuse. You can you're not sound like a man right now. You're not sound like a man right now. You're not sound like a man right now. You're not sound like a man without a name. Yes, yeah. you can find anything with a name. Okay, but that. look, hold on, Mr. Mr. Figures, are you suggesting that you did not know Miss Jackson's last name I did not and you didn't even know your own potential son's name? I did not. I knew nothing. I knew nothing. Well, hey, sometimes the truth may sound like that to you when you're confused. Now he sure doesn't deserve this, and it's completely unfair to him. Now, he believes that it's a blessing in disguise to him because it made him and his mom more closer and that's all that matters. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and tell me what else is in this book. My, uh, his other siblings, just him, the first day he was born. They... So these are all monumental moments in Daniil's life, things that Graduation. his father has missed. All of that stuff is on Facebook. Him walking across that stage and getting that diploma, I did it myself. He ain't never been arrested. And come fall, my baby going to college. Okay. 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 And so you brought this book here today for Mr. Figures no, because it, these are the things and the moments he's missed. You got Ron, to start first. saying that to Mr. Figures. Mr. Figures, I can see you now and I see I see emotion in your eyes and I appreciate that. And I, I, he should know. You know I, I don't want to take that from him, especially any longer. It has been a while. But you know what? After 20 years of waiting, I think it's time that we find out whether or not he is the dad. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Figures, you are not the father. I gave up on myself, so I didn't even know what she was going through. And when you have kids, sometimes you have to give up on yourself to do it for your children. It's a fact that being a parent ain't easy, but the bare minimum for a parent is to be there emotionally for their kids. Now, unfortunately, not many of these parents reach this standard. Watch this young woman break down crying as she confronts her mom for never taking the time to confirm her paternity before she became an adult. These are the most cruel cases on paternity court. Now, there's a lot at stake for this young woman who's been skeptical about her paternity. Now she lunged forward to discover the truth, bringing her mom and her father to court. You're here today suing your mother for $2,200 for emotional distress. You say she's caused you by not knowing who your biological father is. Yes, now, the mom. court has located one possible father and must determine if there is enough evidence to order a paternity test. Ms. Brown Overstreet, you admit to making mistakes as a mother, but claim you shouldn't be held accountable in court for your daughter's pain. Yes, Your Honor. You hope there's enough evidence presented today to prove that the man in court today is your daughter's biological biological father. Yes, Your Honor. The man Clifton Smith, who's in our court today, has not been tested yet. No, Your Honor. I never knew who could be my father. I didn't know who he could be. I didn't know who he was. I was in and out of foster care on three different occasions. Um, foster care wasn't so good, you know. I had four brothers and a sister. I didn't know where they were. They got split up, too. My grandmother got us back. She got sick. I missed three months of school. I got kicked out. I was in alternative school. I got kicked out because my grandma got sick and I had to take care of her. 
Well, that's an unconventional way of making someone aware of something, especially a kid. As she single-handedly almost ruined his relationship over a matter that should have been resolved 20 years ago. Miss Brown Overstreet, how does it feel to hear your daughter speak with such pain in her heart? I mean, it's difficult to even say to another mother that your daughter blames you. I feel like my daughter hates me because of the fact that I wasn't always there and I didn't have a handbook on how to be a parent. I had my kids young and it was six, I have six of them. So it wasn't like it was just one child. I had a hard time trying to be a mother. I didn't know how to raise my kids and when I lost custody of them, I tried my best to get them back and I kind of gave up on myself. I can admit that I was young and I was wild and I was kind of promiscuous, so I did not know who her father was. Did you approach any of those men and say, I'm pregnant, I think you're the father, or you just left them all alone? I just left them all alone. So, Miss Brown, please tell the court, what was life like without a father, growing up without a father in your life? Your Honor, it was hard. I mean, I can barely sit up and describe how hard my life has been. Not only without a father, without my mom. Now, we may not believe the mother or the father, but the kid's gonna have the best memories of these important moments. Now, the ugly part about all of this is the defendant's broken sense of accountability and morality. I had gave up on myself, so I didn't even know what she was going through. Well, when you have kids, sometimes you have to give up on yourself to do for your children. I understand that. I'm sorry. Did you hear your mother say she was sorry? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe that she is? Somewhat I do. Man, the poor girl's been through the whole foster care system, and her mom's here bragging about what a good job she done. Like, okay, Sheila. That woman needs to get a reality check and cash it, man. Now, her daughter's living through confusion. So I asked my mom when I get off work, I say, it's this guy that came up to my job, Mr. Smith. I told her his name. She said, oh, oh yeah, that might be, that, that, it's a possibility that he's your dad. Now, I'm 18 now, I'm grown. Why are you just now telling me that it's a possibility that he could be my father? So, were you angry with your mother that she hadn't ever mentioned Mr. Smith's name? Or were you angry with Mr. Smith? If I have a child out there, I want to know. So when I pulled up, I get out the car and my cousin pointed her out. So I was looking at her and so she came up and I said something to her first and she was smiling at me like I'm like, like, like I'm trying to flirt with her or something. So I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, hold up here. I might be your father. You busy trying to flirt with me. Right. You know, cut it out right there. And you are hopeful. I'm, you truly are hopeful. I love her already. Aww. Even if we get the results, her mom ain't never gonna change her ways, man. But with all the finger pointing and the blaming everybody but herself. You've reviewed the evidence in this case. Yes. Mr. Smith contends that he had a serious injury and the doctor told him he may not be able to have children because of this. We are trying to determine whether it's even appropriate to order a DNA test. Can you shed light on the likelihood and the injury? I believe I can. It's absolutely pos possible, in my opinion, for Mr. Smith uh, or someone with a testicular injury such as him to father a child. Nature often gives us two of what's important. And here's why. On average, a man releases anywhere between 50 million and a billion sperm at a time. So if one testicle isn't functioning, you can cut that number in half to say 25 million. Fertility doesn't become an issue until that number drops below 10 million. So based on the numbers, it's definitely possible for someone with a testicular injury to still father a child as long as the swimmers are normal and healthy. This has clearly been going on for far too long and she deserves to know the truth are not Shantia's father. I'm sorry. Ms. Brown, you okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. How about you, Mr. Smith? I know you had hopes. Yeah, so I still love her. It's cool. So you still my baby, right? You know I love you. After sustaining a severe groin injury while trying to fold a futon, a man comes to court unsure if it's possible for him to be the father of a 22. Kind of crazy, man. But what's crazier is that she'd grown up without parental support at all. Oh, I don't have. They didn't get it done. Should have got it done when he came back into my life when I was 10. And that's a pretty interesting confirmation from both the mother and the potential father, and somehow both discredited him as a dad. I gotta go through this. Y'all hurt my feelings, for real, Mom. Well, I apologize. Now, life, it, it comes with up and downs, and it comes with hurt. Um, as far as I'm concerned, a great job or a good job as best as I could for I my ability. I understand, Mom, but when you say you gotta play the mom and do my I job love her. and try to make sure her and that you don't first, miss out first on other baby. stuff. Okay, the, the, let, me, let me say this. Now, the tests were done, and it's time to check the results and give this young woman some closure. As it pertains to Ms. 
Chanel Craig. Miss Craig, Mr. Thompson is not your father.